Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a look at the 2024 Higher Level Maths Leaving Cert Paper 1, Question 5. First three terms of an arithmetic sequence are as follows. P is real and we have T1 is 2P plus 1, T2 is 5P minus 3 and T3 is 6P plus 7. Find the value of P. Okay, so if this is an arithmetic sequence, that means that if we take, let's say, 2p plus 1 is the first term, 5p minus 3 is the second term, and 6p plus 7 is the third term, These, this is the order in which the terms are given. If we subtract the first term from the second term, we should get exactly the same answer as subtracting the second term from the third term. In other words, there is a constant here, the same constant. We add a certain number to this to get this. We add the same number to this to get this one here. So I'm going to use that to work out the value of p. So if we take 5p minus 3, the second term, subtract the first term, 2p plus 1, that should give me the same as third term, 6p plus 7, minus the second term. 5p minus 3. So all we've got to do is solve this for p. So let's just take away all these brackets. So we've got 5p minus 3 minus 2p minus 1, 6p plus 7 minus 5p plus 3. Let's just simplify. 5 minus 2 is 3p, and you've got minus 3 minus 1 minus 4. On the right hand side, we've got 6p minus 5, so that's just p. 7 plus 3, 10 bring everything over to one side. Uh, oh, sorry, bring the letters over to one side and the numbers over to the other side. So it's going to be 2p is equal to 14, and that finally gives us our answer, p is equal to 7. Okay, and you can check that. You know, you can. You don't have to do this in the exam. They don't ask us to check, but just uh, if you want to see if you've got the right answer or not, uh, put the 7 in here. We get two sevens, 14, plus 1, 15. Uh, put the 7 in here. We get 5 sevens, 35, minus 3, that's 32. Put the 7 in here, 6 sevens, and 7, that'll give us 49. Okay, so let's see, we're going up here in, let's see, 17, plus 17, and we're going up here, plus 17 as well. Okay, so that works. That's perfect. Okay, so let's move on to the next one then. We have G7 is equal to 6 and G11 is 3 over 8. They're the 7th and 11th terms of a geometric sequence, respectively. Find the two possible values of OR, the common ratio of the sequence OR is real. Okay, so we have G7 here is 6 and we have G11 is 3 over 8. Now we know that Tn for a geometric sequence is a or to the power of n minus 1. So in our case then we have, if we just take this one, the seventh term is 6, so that's going to be a times or to the power of 7 minus 1. So that 6 is equal to a or to the power of 6. Over here then we've got G11, which is 3 eighths, is equal to A or to the power of 11 minus 1. So 3 eighths is equal to A or to the power of 10. So here all we've got to do really is just work out what OR is. We've got two equations, two unknowns, so let's work with those. Uh, let's take this one here as being equation 1, this one here is equation 2, so I'm just going to take equation 1 and rearrange it, so that'll give me a is equal to 6 over or to the power of 6. This is equation 1. Now what we can do is substitute this into this equation here. So we have 3 over 8 is equal to a, which is 6 over or to the power of 6, times or to the power of 10. So now we have an equation here, this is equation 2, and we just have one unknown. We've reduced it from two unknowns to one unknown, which is what we want to do. So if we work this out, we'll get 3 over 8 is equal to, we've got an r to the power of 6 on the bottom, we've got an r to the power of 10 on the top, so we're dividing, so we subtract the powers. 
So it's just simply going to be 6 or to the power of 10 minus 6, which is 4. Now if we just divide across, this is multiplied here, so if we divide across by 6, that will give us 3 over 6 multiplied by 8, 6 eighths, 48 is equal to or to the power of 4. Okay, so we've simplified it as much as we can. Let's just get rid of that r to the power of 4 here now. So we have r to the power of 4 is equal to 3 over 48. That's actually 1 over 16. So now we've got to get the fourth root of both sides. So we're going to get fourth root of the left-hand side will give us r. And the fourth root of the right-hand side is going to be 1 over 2. But we need two values here. But because we... If you think about it, you can get the square root of this side and then get the square root again to get us down as far as here. And when you get the square root, then we have two values. So it's going to be plus or minus, plus or minus a half. So R is equal to plus or minus a half. There are two answers there. OK, let's move on to the next one then, part C. A sequence of functions f0, f1, f2 is defined as follows. x is real and x is positive. So f0 is x to the power of 2024. Uh, for n bigger than or equal to 1, the function fn is the derivative of the previous term fn minus 1 with respect to x. Write f1 and f2 in terms of x. So let's do that then. So we have the first term is going to be f0. So that's f0 is going to be 2x to the power of 2024 f1 then is going to be the derivative of that term. So we're going to bring the 2, o, 2, 4 down. Write down the x, reduce the power by 1, 2, o, 2, 3. f2, which is what we were asked for, f1 and f2, is going to be the derivative of this term. So we bring the 2, o, 2, 4 multiplied by 2, o, 2, 3. I brought the 2, o, 2, 3 down. Write down the x, reduce the power by 1, 2, o, 2, 2. So this is f1 and this is f2 here. You could multiply this out, but it doesn't say to give our answer in any particular format, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's uh, that one. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, find the first value of n for which fn is equal to 0. So let's just write that out, see if we can write out a general formula here. So if we take for example f0, that's x to the power of 2024. Now if we take f1, we'll just write out a few of these and see if we can see a pattern here. 2024 x to the power of 2023. f2 then is going to be 2024 times 2 o 2 3 x to the power of 2 o 2 2 now even if we write out another one I'll just do one more this is f3 2 o 2 4 2 o 2 3 2 o 2 2 that's the 2 o 2 2 brought down multiplied and then you take the x and you subtract subtract one so that's our first four terms there okay so we'll see if we can work out a general term here for fn. So fn then is just going to be equal to 2024 times 2023 times all the way down to some value here, which is going to be, it's really, if you, if you look at uh, what this number here is and this number here, even this number here, it's going to be 2024 minus n minus 1. So this number here is going to be 2024 minus the n minus 1. So it's 2024 minus 2, which will give us this number here. This one here is, this number here is 2024 minus the n value, which is 2 minus 1. So it's 2024 minus 1, which gives us 2023. This value here is 2024 minus n minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's just 2024. So it's just going to be time, it's just going to be times here 2024 minus n minus 1. And then we have to multiply that by x to the power of. Uh, the power here is going to be 2024 minus n. 
So this number here is 2024 minus 1. This one here is 2024 minus n here, which is 2. This number here is 2024 minus 3. So this here would give us our general equation, or our general formula for our terms. So let's see if we can work with this. We need, uh, according to our question here, fn to be equal to 0. So we want the right-hand side here to be equal to 0. We want all of this to be equal to 0. Now if you look at this, all of these terms here are constants. They're all numbers. So 2024 is not equal to 0. 2023 is not equal to 0. All these numbers down here are not equal to 0. This is the only one with an n here in it. This could be equal to 0. Let's see. What about this here? Could this here be equal to 0? Well, if you have a look at this number here, this x here is positive. We're told that in the question, x is greater than 0. So we're raising, we're raising the x here to the power of some number here. Now, if you raise a positive number to any power, positive or negative or 0, it'll always be positive. x to the power of 0, if this was 0 here, for example, we would get 1. If this was a negative number, for example, we would get 1 over x, which is positive to the power of some positive number. So this number here is always going to be positive. So this number here is positive. All these constants here is positive. The only thing that we have here that could possibly be zero, that could possibly turn this entire right-hand side into a zero, is this term here. So 2024 minus n minus 1, we want that to be zero. Because all of these are positive, this is positive, this is the only one that could possibly turn the right-hand side into a zero. So if you look at this, then we've got 2024 minus n plus 1 is equal to 0. That'll give us 2024 plus 1 is 2025. Bring the, the n over to the other side. That'll give us n is equal to 2025. Okay, so that might be a kind of a long-winded way of doing that. Maybe you guys found a, an easier way, a shorter way of doing it, but that's, that's really it for this question.